Hey guys, I'm Lee from Lee Likes Music, the place to share, explore and learn about rock music from Bandcamp. And in today's video we're going to talk about Queens of the Stone Age's new single which is called The Evil Has Landed. So that's coming up. This just happened, Queens of the Stone Age. For you guys who don't know about this band, they're basically a hard rock, psychedelic rock band from Palm Desert, California. They released a string of albums. One of their most famous ones is probably Songs for the Deaf. That is an album that I just think is... Man, there's no words for it. It's an insanely good album and you just have to check it out if you haven't listened to it already. Not only that album was very outstanding in the early 2000s, many of the other ones were really good as well. I'm a big Queens of the Stone Age fan and uh, throughout their whole career they just seem to build and build and build momentum along the way. Anyways, I actually reviewed this song quite some time ago, a few weeks ago because Queens of the Stone Age actually played this song live. Someone recorded it with a camera, uploaded it to YouTube, and I was like, man, this is really good footage and also good audio quality, so why not make a review? But today, Queens of the Stone Age officially uploaded the studio or album version of this track to their um, social media profiles. So the goal of this video is basically just to compare the live version to the album version, and just give my overall take on the song and just what I think about the upcoming album, alright? The first few things that I noticed to be a bit different from the live version is the fact that Hami is singing in the intro. He's singing with this very soothing, high-pitched voice, closer, come closer, or that is not the melody. I can't remember the melody in my head right now, but that is what he's singing. Come close. Then you also hear the rattling sound of someone strumming some muted strings on the guitar. So yeah, that was like instantly what I noticed to be different. Now, very soon after that, you can hear this melody being played on the guitar, and that is later on played in the chorus, and it has this very Queens of the Stone Age signature feel to it. The melody strikes this balance between something dissonant and accordant. Hami throws out these very sleek and quirky guitar solos that he's very famous for. The song also slowly progresses and gradually changes as you listen to it, so there's always some novel passages coming up, and that was something that was very positive to me, even when I listened to the live version. That was one of the things that I really, that really made me like the song and appreciate it more than their first single, How You Used To Do. Man, I, I just don't like this song. Uh, I mean, it's good that they're trying out something new, but to make it that poppy and swingy in a way, I, uh, man, I just didn't like it. Another thing that really distinguished this version from the live version is the fact that it's so polished, you know? It has this really, really polished production, and um, it's, for some reason it shouldn't be that surprising because it is the album version, but at the same time I feel like You know Queens of the Stone Age would fit for a bit more rougher sound So maybe the production could have been a little bit more dirty That's that's just me distinct snappy smack and during the live version you could also hear that John Theodore's um, snare, whenever he was hitting the snare, it had this very distinct snappy smack sound. I don't know, I have a thing for details, but this sound, this very distinct sound, you couldn't hear it on the studio version, the album version, so that was a little bit disappointing to me. It might not be something that you guys resonate with, but hey, we all have different ears, right? I guess that is a way of saying it. <laughs> In many ways, the studio version of this song is equal to the live version, but you can hear many details in this album version, studio version, whatever you want to call it. For example, one of the details is you can hear more guitar layers. There's also the synth that is playing during the choruses, adds a bit of versatility, adds another little detail, and I kind of like that. But again, what really, really surprised me when I listened to this was just how polished the production on the song is. I, when I first put the song on, it almost sounded a bit tame, a bit dull. Now, <laughs> I don't want to say that this song is bad in any way. I think I gave this song a 7 out of 10 in my previous review of the live version, and I'm still standing by that rate, but 
I just found it to be a little bit off in the beginning. Now it's something that I'm starting to get used to. And I also think that what saved it a little bit, what made this song congruent to what Queens of the Stone Age have made before, is just the um, distorted guitars in the chorus that really just made this song good for me. They're not taking any wild chances with this song, and I'm not expecting them to do so. I'm expecting them to put out a song that most people will like. Like, they, they have to put out single material. Uh, I'm not expecting them to put out the weirdest, quirkiest song of all time as a single. But what would be nice, in my point of view, from the newest album is to see that they're doing something new, something a bit experimental, something a bit risky. Like, for example, what they did with Colopsia on Like Clockwork, or maybe I'm Designer on Era Vulgaris. Quick into the Pointless on Rated R, all of these songs are a little bit off, they're a bit risky, they're weird, but at the same time that is what makes them stand out, that, that is what makes them unique. Um, I guess just me having opinions about what they're going to put out is a bad thing because I don't want to be, be disappointed. I think I should just have an open mind about this album. Uh, but I'm just such a big fan of Queens of the Stone Age, so I can't... I, ah, man, I just can't help it. Alright, so remember the secret that I talked about in the beginning of this video? Now I'm going to reveal it. It's not a, it's no longer a secret, okay? I'm planning to do one of these following things, and you have to decide which one of them I should do, okay? Number one, make a video series of all of their albums, basically reviewing their albums from their first album to the latest one, Villains, when that one is released, of course. Number two, make a 20 minute long, or maybe even 30 minute long, Queens of Stone Age documentary. I personally would love to do that one. And number three, make a documentary about the uh, Palm Desert rock music scene. So I don't know if you guys have watched, uh, there's this documentary called Desert Age that is already a documentary about the Palm Desert music scene. If you haven't watched it, you should definitely do it because you can learn so much about the music community there. Really inspiring to look up into the history of Queens of the Stone Age and all of the bands that kind of surrounded them at that time and just find out what the essence of that place was like. Anyways, let me know which one of these three alternatives you would like me to make. So if you would like to watch that, make sure to leave a comment below on what I should do. Also make sure to hit that subscribe button if you would like to watch those videos. Yeah, I guess that is it guys. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Thank you so much for being here throughout the whole video. And uh, hope this, hope to, oh my god. <laughs> hope to, <laughs> Hope to see you later, guys. Stay tuned. Bye.